Sometimes on an aeroplane, the unthinkable happens. A fire. Worse still, a crash. Who's there to save us? The first people we turn to are those who a moment ago were serving us drinks. People who have to combine the jobs of waiter, caretaker, childminder and amateur doctor. The professional jet set. The stewards and stewardesses. OK then, so while you go then, if you've got a large fire on your hands, two of you. Start at the bottom and work up, as I showed you. Last year, 20,000 people applied to British Airways for 500 cabin crew jobs. Now this group of 15 trainees are on their final course to see if they're made of the right stuff. You'll just spread the fire everywhere. That's water on a flammable liquid fire. So you'll never put it out. So what I want you to do now is to go in there with a the BCF and put the fire out. I know the job is a very glamorous one, except when you're 10,000 feet up and... Uh, and your feet are killing you, and, uh, and it's ten hours on the way to, uh, to Johannesburg. But it has an image of glamour, uh, and it has an image and excitement to do with the, uh, the hotels and all that sort of thing. But at the end of the day, the job is actually about people. It's not about those things. It's about people and the impression that you make on each of our passengers. Yes. Oh, welcome. I'm Anna May. Oh, hello. Oh, <laughs> hello, McLeod. Helen McLeod, to you. And the public image is of a very glamorous steward or stewardess. Nobody thinks of the work that goes in really into it. You know, they, they just think of some somebody over five foot two. <laughs> That's what everybody says. And um, with a good personality. I mean, they don't think, you know, there's studying and things involved. Uh, Paul Higgins is the name. Paul Higgins, hi. Hello, I'm Sue Thacker. Sue, hi there. Hello, Sue. Well, my dad just sort of said to me, you know, why, why on earth do you want to sort of like go and give up all your friends and everything like that to go and sort of be a waiter in the sky? Now, how do we come to decide that people like yourselves were going to do well? What we did was we looked at you as a person and we thought about the qualities that you had as individuals. We thought about you from the point of view of an immediate impact on us. Not somebody who you gradually got to know, but somebody who could make an immediate impact as somebody that a customer would like to be with, like to feel comfortable with, and like to fly with. We saw that quality in all of you here today. What we'd like to do is ask each of you to tell us a little bit about yourselves. Paul Higgins, 21, likes Betty Davis and Barbara Stanwyck, was bored being a stockbroker's clerk, travelled abroad for the first time this year. I do a bit of tap dancing, uh, I belong to a drama group, uh, I swim, I go running every week, so hopefully I'll be able to sort of, you know, keep a lot of that up and yeah. also uh, keep you know, in shape. Mm -hmm. Helen MacLeod likes keeping in shape and knitting. 21, Scottish from Dunfermline, didn't enjoy being a nurse. Well, I went through the phase of the weight training and that, but that was to kind of build up the body a bit, which didn't work, so I give it up. <laughs> <laughs> um, Louise Peel from Preston, 24, once a full-time nurse, knits, sews and plays the classical guitar. Um, I've given up now I'm a nursing, but I'm still a member of Booper, and I've been Booper nursing all last week, working on nights, because I prefer working nights and days. Neil Dover from Durham, 21, was a builder, likes football and motor racing, Wondered when he applied if his friends would call him gay. My college days, and <laughs> they were allowed. Um, it was a diploma I did in building, so from a builder to an airline steward, uh, let's take, uh, take some explaining. Before today, he's hardly ever left home. <laughs> I was absolutely petrified. To me, I mean, I'm going to get outside of skate nest. These favoured few are anxious to join an organisation that styles itself the world's favourite airline. They won't be on the full-time staff, they'll be a support crew, called in for up to 20 days a month when needed, but with no guarantee of work. They'll be flying 747s. No bunny hops to Manchester for them, but missions to Miami. This is the big league.
Day one, kit, ID, get to know the rest of the chaps. Six nerve-wracking weeks lie ahead. Exams that will ask them the name of the chairman and how much Angostura to put in a Manhattan cocktail. Mine? I absolutely hate first days. And it wasn't, it was okay and everything, but I'm glad it's over with. I know where I'm coming tomorrow morning and everything. At least I know where I'm at. I'm looking forward to the rest of it, actually. Well, we might not get lost in the morning. No, <laughs> we might not end in the army barracks anyway. No. A lot to take in, and the work hasn't started yet. Not quite what I expected, really. I sort of uh, thought it wouldn't be so much, you know, sort of work, work, work. Louise and Neil hadn't met before, but are allocated the same digs. Cheers, madam. Oh, thank you, darling. It's a chance to bone up on cabin thank etiquette. Of course, yeah. But I want the hot towels afterwards, please. Well, I'm worried about getting the wings. And then after the wings, whether I can... Um, get settled in, in travelling the world, after I've travelled the world, if, after I've seen all the places that I really want to see, whether there's going to be still enough pull for me to carry on the job. I think a lot of people think it's glossy. They think it's something that's easy, but it's not. It's damn hard, very hard. Mm. Um, I mean, the work we've got to go through is unbelievable. The female uniforms may have a certain designer, prison wardress touch to them, but they have to be functional. Just moves the button an inch, and it, oh, so it well, didn't pull. So if this fits you, well, well, I to ponytails may be no longer than six so inches. I don't know if you need to put a measure on that. Really. Yeah. It's not too long. For the boys, the touring yeah, test team that's image. Point. I've got now that they look the part, the disembodied voice of Chief Executive Colin Marshall tells them how to act it. Hello. I'm sorry I cannot be with you today. Nevertheless, I want to join with everyone in cabin crew training to welcome you to British Airways. You are joining a success story, a winning team. We're going to miss our flight. Everybody's seen the adverts. Don't worry. You'll catch your plane. And that is a promise that we very much have to live up to because it's something that we're telling the general public about. It's a promise that we're making on TV to people all over the world. We actually have to live up to those expectations. So we have to be able to identify with the thinking in the company. That... In his first role-playing session, Neil is very far from super steward. I'm very happy with this. I'm absolutely squashed in in this seat. I thought that the seats on this aircraft have a bit more legroom. Look at it, I can hardly move. I've got my bag stuck down there. I've been missed out on the drinks round. I'm not very happy at all with this flight. Um, well... Yeah, I mean, with your advertisements on the, um, you know, TV and that, I just always get the impression there'd be more room, and I feel really cramped in here. Yeah, well, it, uh, we're terribly sorry again, but mm. uh, it's just the, the seats itself, there's nothing we can do. We have got new planes coming on, mm. you know, and uh, they are far, far more room in them, so you'll be... It's just this one plane, old one, you know, mm. but shall we? Yeah, well, yeah, the world's yeah. favourite airline, it's not very good, yeah. is it? Be aware that when people come on board the aircraft, that it's unfamiliar territory to them. And that sometimes, you know, that's, that's your home, as it were. You feel comfortable there. Very often the passengers might not. So you have to be conscious of people setting up their own territory. And at times where you may feel, make them feel uncomfortable when you're actually stepping into that territory. At times you can use it to your advantage. So on the aircraft, as cabin crew, we tend to refer to ourselves as professional space invaders. <laughs> because there are times when you will invade somebody's territory not only in the sense of actually invading the space the comfortable space that we all have around our bodies but the fact that passengers get on board the aircraft and set up their territory it's all right is it yeah my name's Helen if you have any problems you know give us a, a call you've got your call buttons here while I was talking to Sue over here and I was crouching down I said to you all how does that look to you now, I'll, I'll I could have been here. saying, gosh, Sue, I think you're a really fat cow. <laughs> I really don't like you. <laughs> but if you couldn't hear what I was saying, what would you think? <laughs> what a nice stewardess. Yes. <laughs> so that happens a great deal on the aircraft because the other passengers can't necessarily hear what you're saying, can they? But they can see what you're see what you're doing, and they gain impressions from that. So similarly, I could be saying, 
Oh, Sue, I'm terribly sorry that you don't feel very well today. Is there anything I can do for you? And what would you think? Oh, bat. What an old bag. Oh, she's really having a go at her, isn't she? I'm not going to go and ask her for anything. So, we describe that as the halo effect. And it's almost like if you imagine a sort of ring around yourself, all the people that are watching what's happening to you, it's like it's a kind of a halo. Now, that can be a positive halo effect or a negative halo effect. I don't like the way that wing's going up and down. Don't keep knocking no, your knees. I can't concentrate. Can I Sorry. take your tray? Yes, yes, fine, yeah. Oh, dear, did that whiskey not do the trick? No, but the gin did. <laughs> <laughs> the size of a 747 and you're sitting on an aisle seat you can see right up the aircraft can't you what I'm trying to illustrate by this is we need to be careful about our non-verbal behavior on board the aircraft because the passengers are interested in us they sit and they watch and they watch a great deal thank you very much managed oh, to get all my paperwork done thank oh I'm glad I hope you fly with us again yes thank you very much, thank you very much. oh I'm glad to, to meet you <laughs> goodbye Oh, that was dead. <laughs> 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 oh. <laughs> Do you want a passenger to go and say, ooh, look at her makeup? Makeup is compulsory. Nail varnish is optional. And beards require special permission. I'm sure that you probably heard in beauty that everything goes up because you're defying gravity because you know, your face is dropping and all the wrinkles. <laughs> Okay, the reason that I'm going downwards is that all of us have got a very fine downy hair on your face. And if you go down, then you actually smooth down those little hairs. If you go up, then you ruffle them up, and under the aircraft lighting, you can see them. You may just have to look a little bit at the spikiness there, Tim, to ask you to sort of comb it round a bit and then save the, uh, <laughs> save the spikes for the weekend. Yeah. And when you're flying, the skin does become very dehydrated. The pollution in the atmosphere is, is you know, pounding on it all the time. And that's the same as spots all with blackheads as well. Just, you know, just ease them out very gently and they're quite happy to come out. As I always say, that you know, no matter if it's winter out there, it's always summer under the armpits, <laughs> okay? because you're standing up. Um, or even if you're doing the demonstration. Um, and I mean, you've probably all seen the sights there. And the oxygen drops from here. <laughs> and there you are, you know, on full display. <laughs> Uh, with a lovely big soggy armpit. And talking about going out and enjoying yourselves, obviously do be aware that you're having an opportunity now to go to a few places around the world, which are, shall we say, renowned, to say the least. Um, <laughs> I think we all know what we're talking about. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, you know, what's Mum's advice? You know, if you can't be good, be careful. Yeah. Probably you'll realise what it is. It's got like a point at the end, and it goes down, and then it's got... It's not this big. <laughs> and it's got a little hole at the end of it. Right, this part I would actually leave alone. Don't, don't get into that. But this, this is the magic bit. And this is like a little ball, and it's got a hole in it. And then you just press it very gently around the spot. And then it sort of just comes out in the middle. <laughs> Living colour. <laughs> you said you got to watch your spots. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In the 1985 Manchester air disaster, 55 people died. But the coroner told a BA stewardess, Joanna Toff, a number of people owe their lives to you. She went on a course like this one. First two. Keep right down low, right down very low. Shut the door. Down. Now, here's a CIA requirement that you have to go in there. <laughs> it's hard for a simulated disaster to bring home the shock of the real thing. I mean, I don't think you ever really think about that until it really is going to happen to you. I mean, you can think about it, that driving a car. I mean, there's <laughs> enough facts. I mean, I drive as well, so you could think, oh, I'm going to crash the car. So, no, I don't, I don't worry about that. I remember on the jumbo that you've got passengers upstairs as well. Because a lot of people forget the poor passengers upstairs. So make sure that you evacuate those first. It's still soon be my turn. <laughs> and you're trembling with fright. That's no damn good at all. You know what they say. 
Never book upstairs on a jumbo jet. When they do remember you, it's much further to slide to the runway. Then three and a half days to learn the difference between renal colic and angina pectoris. <laughs> so don't give anything to eat or drink, don't give any medication at all. And also talk to him, reassure him. If I'm unconscious, how am I going to do that? Then you can get a medical history, you're going to be A for a doctor on the aircraft and keep the captain fully informed as to the passenger's condition. Your knees, right by the torso of the body. Pop that hand there, then you can cradle the head out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You found some unconscious there, not yeah. breathing, you've stopped bleeding, so you've cleared the airway, B, breathe for them. Okay, so the four four quick inflations. One, nostrils, pinch the nostrils. Three, four. Right, no pulse. Pupils are going to be like that, dilated in the face. Both pupils like that. Off you go. One, one thousand. Two, one thousand. Three, one thousand. Four. Much. Not too much pressure. Five breath. Now you can stop the thousand now if you wish. One, two, three, four, five breath. Air in quicker. One. They learn to look after their own health as well. Trips to the tropics can bring the dangers of diseases ranging from bilharzia to malaria. If they want to, they can also see a video on AIDS. Neil and Louise keep bringing work home with them. The kitchen has become the galley. It's only a 737 that you do that on. Huh? Oh, that, oh, so that, it's all done for us. All, all you've got to do is pull the lever. Yeah, it's yeah. in a box, isn't it? Yeah, it, it comes out of the box and tells you. Tells yeah. you hard work. Which is very hard. Yeah, I think I, I never expected so much theory. Never. No. I mean, I expected us to learn how to um, give the best sort of care and attention in what we can actually provide for the customer, but I never thought so much so intense and everything. I mean, the first aid was unbelievable. And we'll be discussing certain recent hijackings, sabotage threats, or even sabotage attacks on airplanes. And we'll also be looking at terrorist attacks at airports themselves. We'll be discussing the profile of a hijacker. This is somebody that I hope you'll never have to meet. In front of you on the desk here, you'll see a series of Weapons, explosive devices, grenades, bullets, ammunition, and various other items that have been made to look pretty general. Your normal day-to-day run-of-the-mill objects, which unfortunately have been turned into exceedingly dangerous devices. And we'll be talking to you how to handle or how to deal with a suspicious suitcase. Now, Peter, I wonder if you could pass me that suspicious suitcase, please. <laughs> That's the difference. Does anybody have any questions at the moment? More down to earth, or up in the sky, rather, is to know the geography of the plane. Where are the caricots? What is doghouse stowage? What colour light goes on if someone pushes the crew call button in the loo? When you go up the stairs, mind the heels of your shoes, because they're open metal stairs, so try and walk on your toes so you don't yeah. catch the heels of your shoes. If you don't know where all the toilets are, you yeah. won't get your wings. We've got 45 minutes to complete this first section, so it's really the idea is that you just walk around, find out the answers to the questions yourself. If you have any queries, I'll be here, come and ask me, but try and do as much as you can on your own or within the group. <laughs> Oh, you want to 
want us to know about aircraft toilets in five minutes. I don't suppose it's ever happened that you've sort of like got two people in there, has it? Well, shall I say, it has been no. I think we can say that the Five Mile High Club might exist. In charge of their training, Joe Paul. In the middle of the course, we send them out on a trip. And this is a very exciting event for them because uh, some of them have never flown at all uh, before. Uh, and uh, many of them have never been on a 747, let's say, which is a very, very big aeroplane. Well, what's the fuel like in all these? The fuel? Um, well, you can take, from what I've read, 39,000 imperial gallons, which when you think of it, would, would fill a small swimming pool, wouldn't it? Yeah, I mean, can you imagine the first flight on this? Fantastic, isn't it? It's going to be such an experience. A slightly nervous tension has settled in as they realise that the tests are upon them. What it is is that we were just wondering what would happen if we don't pass the assessments right. OK, um, as we mentioned earlier, there are six different assessments on the course. So obviously we have to look at each person as an individual. Um, if you failed um, quite a few of the assessments, it is true that we have had people in the past that actually haven't passed the course, and that means that they haven't been able to fly with us, and we have had to terminate their contracts. And then you look up there, what time have we got? Oh, I see. So it really is just Christmas all. That's the code. Go by it there. Paul is having a bit of trouble in the duty free department. So, what should you look for? Uh, purchasing goods from. So, you look under purchasing goods, see what. A big moment. The results of the mid-course tests are given personally. Who is? Come on. Been in the doctor's surgery, isn't it? Yeah, Next it been... <laughs> Did they get it right? Where are the baby's nappies stowed? Which martini checks the cherry and which the olive? What is the chairman's name? The prospect of the mid-course flight hangs on such slender threads. Your results, aren't you? Yes, I will. Mm -hmm. yes. How do you think it is? Mm, not so bad. Not so bad. Brilliant. Oh, well, well done. Oh, you've been with me, didn't The pass mark is a daunting 80%. A forgotten lavatory could be fatal. Right, it's after all what you've been waiting for. Oh, gosh, what I've been dreading. 93% on your mid-course paper. Oh. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, that's, that? Well, that's surprising and pleasant to know, yeah. Good. Yeah, I think that's a very pleasing result. We'll have a look through in a moment just to see where the mistakes were. Uh, 91 on the technical. Oh, that is... <laughs> that is surprising, because that worried me. Fine. Lovely mark. OK, well done. But this morning's paper. Shh. Mm -hmm. Dip down a bit. Instructress Anna May has bad news for Paul. I looked at it and it just went completely out of my head. Oh. Uh, and the more I tried to remember it, the yeah. worse I got, the more worked out. And I mm. kept thinking, oh... Um, if it's any consolation, you, you're not the only one sort of going to be a couple of others sitting there with you, OK, taking it. But, as I say, please don't think that it's anything final at this stage. So we do have a, a retake situation. And again, thank you for all your hard work this week. Wow. And your sense of humour. You've made me laugh <laughs> a few times. And Anna May says, please don't call her mum, otherwise she'll have to smack your face. <laughs> <laughs> well, the way she goes on, put me collar down and things like that. <laughs> She's got your best interests at heart. Oh, definitely, definitely. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay, thanks, Bye-bye. Paul's social plans for the weekend will have to be cancelled. Monday morning's retake paper is the last chance to show he knows the price of whiskey in Japanese yen. Hi, Paul. Hi, Paul. Never mind. You'll probably come up on Monday. Yes. Mm. Yeah, it's probably will. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. You, 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 you'll do much better on Monday, I know. Mm. How have you had the weekend? We'll have to go sort of on the tube together. Like yeah. 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 There's sort of so many sort of silly mistakes that I've made. Mm. But have I got to go in? I mean, I know yeah. you know it because we've gone over it together on the tube mm. so many times. Mm. I know you do it on Monday. Yeah. Now, are you quite fit and well, dear? Yes, I am. You are. And you're not in any treatment at the moment no. from your doctor? No. You've no allergies to any drugs no. at all? And you can eat eggs? Yes, I can eat eggs. And you're not pregnant? No, I'm not pregnant. Just say so. Ah. Ah, again. Ah. And hold that up the sleeve with that other hand. That's easy. Have you had a lot of these? What? That's fruit. So now it's your moment. They've all passed their tests right, now. Julie. They've been jabbed. They're not pregnant. They know which martini to drop the olive in. 
The next part of the course is to be let loose on paying passengers on a real flight. But where to? Who to Miami? Neil. Uh, I do, I do. <laughs> <laughs> where are we going? Well, let's <laughs> I don't know, wouldn't it be somewhere like Blackpool or somewhere like that? Chicago. Oh, no, Dubai. Oh, Dubai. Oh, Dubai. 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 The celebration is tempered by the eight-hour ban on drinking before flying. They call it bottle-to-throttle time. I really was. I thought, I am not going to cope with it. It's just the nerves. Yeah. Yeah. It's just nerves. We never realised that we had. And very nasty subjects, I'm afraid. I have to talk to you about things that you should and shouldn't do, and one of them is alcohol. On long haul, um, you will find that when you get somewhere, and it's very difficult to suddenly you sort of wake up in the middle of the night and you realise it's nine o'clock at home but only sort of two in the morning their time and you suddenly think, oh, I'm wide awake, how can I get to sleep? You might think about knocking back a few drinks. Don't do that sort of thing. It is very easy to slip into alcohol. We do have a special um, cabin crew support group which are like good Samaritans. They're cabin crew who understand other cabin crew's problems. What time do you get there tomorrow? Back at the digs, Neil is first out of the hangar. Right then, Autumn. I'm off to Dubai, so... You go in? Yeah. Right, come here, Petal. In World War II, a young flyer on his first mission got two eggs on his plate. But Neil will be putting the eggs on somebody else's plate. Yeah. Right then, I better go now. Okay, yeah. try Star House. All right. Right, we'll take so, care. So, seeing you. Yeah. Well, enjoy yourself in New York. yourself. No messing. No messing. See you later. <laughs> Don't make your time, Neil. All right, yeah. I'll see you later. Okay, bye. 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 That's one gone. Us later. Yeah. yeah. Because it is my first trip, I'm bound to get some things wrong. But uh, the only worry I've got really is <laughs> getting there on time. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Roy. Welcome to our flight today to Kuwait and Dubai. Two persons today. On my right, John Hanley will be in charge of the first class cabin. Hello. And Anthony on my left will be looking after mm -hmm. the rear cabins. And sitting there looking very pleased with themselves today in the front row <coughs> here, we have two super number crew members who are on their very first flight. Welcome to the team. Come out and have a look no. at them. No, no. <laughs> How many weeks have been in Cranebank so far? Uh, Sorry? How many weeks have been in Cranebank so far? The point of it is that they learn the whole picture. It, it gives them an opportunity to practice the skills they've learned in the school on the aircraft. They work very, very hard. But what they also find out about is the other side of the life. Um, they will have a couple of days, let's say, in uh, some exotic-sounding part of the world. And I think it gives them an idea of what the whole lifestyle is going to be like as a crew member, because it is totally unlike any other sort of a job. I just can't wait to start. So excited, really. It's just... Unbelievable, couldn't I? Go to the Middle East. I'd like you all to imagine yourselves working on board the aircraft. Suddenly get on board and find you've got 400 people for lunch. But at times the job is stressful, and what you thought you had three hours to do a breakfast routine, and you've suddenly got 40 minutes, you know. And everybody wants four cups of tea. I mean, that's stressful. And they step on and off your aeroplanes, you know, it's quite a miracle to them that these things actually get off the ground. Let alone that they've got somebody like Neil coming around to actually serve them a half tray, serve them a meal. Try not to let that become an irritant to you, because it is a very exciting and very enjoyable job. So long as you keep it in perspective, but once you start letting it annoy you that you're not here on Saturday night when you wanted to be because your trip's gone wrong, you have to keep a sense of humour, you really do. One, uh, one, two, three... Four, five, six, so that's 72 plus 7, 79, and then we've got 61 specials all together. Vegetarians, Hindus, child meals, no beef, kosher meals, yeah. we've got the lot today. That's Which six, variety, isn't 61 all together, so that'll keep us out of mischief, keep us busy. In a way, you heard in briefing that there's 14 first class 
57 club and 182 economy down the back. The moment of truth, Helen's first passenger. Will she forget the words? Obviously, in your role as cabin crew members, people need to be able to feel that they can come up and approach you, talk to you about things, ask you for things. If you appear very smart, efficient, cold and standoffish, it's not going to give a very good impression of you as a crew member, is it? And also confidence in the respect of knowing your job well. You know, being seen as an efficient person who knows what they're doing. It doesn't look very good to the passengers if we're all sitting there we're on takeoff with our knees knocking together. They're going to be thinking, what on earth's wrong with the aeroplane, aren't they? Just a lot of people are nervous about flying, aren't they? Not just about flying, but have they left the gas on and that sort of thing. And so up, up and away. Plenty of olives and nappies and legroom on board, and the name of the chairman isn't likely to come up. Neil reaps the dividend of hours of practice in his kitchen galley in Hounslow. And if they want to know, Helen can tell the Muslims which way is Mecca. So I serve the chicken or the lamb, sir? At last, an emergency, and it's one of the crew. Helen's medical training is about to be put to the test. totally from home uh, anything up to two or three weeks it can be it may only be a night here and there so yes you do need to be robust and resilient so you all had medicals didn't you you had to make certain that everybody is fit to do the job they have to understand that it can be quite difficult why have scheduling made me go away this weekend when I wanted to go to a wedding if they live alone they've got to leave their houses shut up and if it's been uh, frosty weather or something, their pipes might burst while they're away. Why has my trip been delayed when I wanted to be home for a dinner and dance? If they've got 
family, parents, husbands, wives, whatever, children, it actually is quite difficult to keep having to go away. That's not fair. So they need a lot of resilience and stamina to really be able to cope with it well. The point is, you see, when you're very new to the job, and you, you know, you probably find yourself slightly new, naive, yeah. things like this, don't be ashamed of that. So if you've got any problems, just ring me at any time. Right. All right, because I can probably give you some advice or... Please, don't ever feel obliged to do anything that you are not completely happy about. And if somebody invites you along for a nightcap, Sometimes it will be just for a nightcap, other times it might be for something more. So just be aware of that and don't ever feel that you have to be forced into a situation that you're not happy about. Especially when you're a little bit new and don't quite know all the rules. There might be times when um, people are being genuinely open and friendly and goodness knows what. On the other hand, there might be times when you may have perhaps given off the wrong kind of signals, people have been flirting with you and suddenly Bang, there you are in a situation you didn't want to be in. So... <laughs> <laughs> Not literally, exactly. <laughs> Punctuality is absolutely essential. The pick-up time is the time that the bus leaves the hotel, not the time you arrive in the hotel lobby, because you'll have to pay your bill, hand your key back in. In certain stations, you have to sign out of the hotel. Punctuality is absolutely essential, because there's an aircraft waiting to take off, with possibly up to 400 passengers waiting to go somewhere, who won't be happy if you oversleep and turn up late. I didn't have time to be nervous because I was so busy. Well, she so you know, it's nice because we actually had a chance to talk to the passengers as well. I was told that the new girls always get the bars oh, because oh, nobody else likes doing them. That's what I heard. Yeah. 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 Jeanette and I were shattered, weren't we? Yeah. 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 My yeah. feet, I felt yeah. I didn't have any feet. Yeah. 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 I've heard the cat has requested you again. Back at base, they debrief each other eagerly. It seems to have been a succession of successful sorties. Nobody was rumbled as a trainee. Yeah. Getting up and down, up and down. Yeah. Did everybody manage to stay up and do something in the evening? So we eventually got the suitcase and we decided to go up to our elected rooms. And I hadn't even got the key in my door when Sheila's running up the corridor saying, Louise, Louise, you'll never guess what's happened. <laughs> well, I opened up the door and I saw the telly was on. And I just thought, the lights, <laughs> the lights were off but the telly was on. And I just thought, oh, someone's forgotten to turn off the telly. And I, I turned round and I looked, and here's this couple on top of each other. <laughs> Man and a woman. <laughs> <laughs> so I just sort of looked, and I said, yeah. oh, sorry. <laughs> and he said, oh, we're your fans crew. <laughs> I said, well, I'm British Airways. He said, yes, I can tell. <laughs> they've done it. They've passed, all of them. Once you're on the course, you usually do, unless you do something really terrible, like forgetting the passengers on the upper deck, or the chairman's name. Service and responsibility. It's an odd alloy of a job, and for the support crew, a precarious living. For Neil and Helen, how long will the glamour last? <laughs> Thing of Windsor or Sandringham, this year the Queen chose the Royal Albert Hall to deliver her Christmas message. Surrounded by 2,000 children from the Commonwealth, the Queen told them the future of the world was in their hands. Some species of wild plants and animals are sadly bound to become extinct. The great thing to remember is that it is not too late to reduce the damage. If we can change our attitudes, and behavior. Afterwards, some of the children stayed behind to ask some rather personal questions. Did she ever feel nervous in front of large crowds? 
Well, sometimes one does, yes. It's quite, quite something. And, uh, Do you enjoy um, your job as the Queen? I find it very interesting, yes. I had lots of opportunities to meet. Romanian dictator Nicolae Ceausescu and his wife in captivity. Ceausescu, dressed in a black fur-lined coat, sits with his wife. She bites her nails but otherwise displays little emotion. These shots are taken before their trial. They're given a medical to demonstrate their fitness to stand before the martial court. No clue is given as to where the trial took place. Pictures of the execution. then played the country's new national anthem on 15 separate occasions of two bodies at the foot of a bullet-ridden wall one clearly that of Romania's former dictator Paul Davis ITN Bucharest this was the only visit The people they deceived and oppressed have been watching, many faces filled with disbelief. Their lives had been dominated in every way by the regime. They heard the couple refuse to stand to hear the verdict. Then the proof that sentence had been carried out. These print workers were amongst the first to join the revolution, bringing out a new... 